Well, thank you. I'm um, going to talk about three projects here that um, I've been in, involved in with, um, with breeding for organic and, and that sort of thing. Um, one of them has been operating for a while. That's the Novik project, the, which uh, my title here is the, the, the new Novik, Northern Organic Vegetable Improvement Collaborative, and then about a couple of new projects that have started. Um, just, you know, a lot of our work is um, based on the premise that there are, you know, an organic system is different than a conventional system and we have to um, breed and select for adaptation to that system. So the things that are shown in yellow here are, are what I see as the primary differences with between organic and, and conventional. Um, the Novik project is one, this is uh, just a picture, a shot of some of the farmers we've worked with and and the researchers in the Oregon area. Um, Novik started, the original Novik started in 2009, ran to 2013, and uh, we, we had kind of a, a year hiatus um, when uh, ORAI was not, um, I think we missed a, a period with the ORAI, and then we're funded again in 2014, and so we've had our, our first uh, full year our first season with the project, and then it's going to run through 2018. And you know, we're really happy to get it funded. This is a fundamental problem with the granting process and trying to fund plant breeding work. Is that we don't, you know, we'd be nice if we could get chunks of money in 10-year period, um, but looks like we're at least going to get an eight-year time span with these. So it's. Um, <clears throat> We've, we've been interested in things like adaptation to organic production, and it's a combination of both variety trials and breeding a set of five crops. And as I mentioned, it's funded by Organic Research and Extension Initiative, or ORIEI. It's a collaborative project with five public institutions and organic farmers in, in four states, in Oregon, Washington, Wisconsin, and New York. Um, the same partners in Novik 1 and Novik 2 as well. Um, so generally we, you know, we, we work as a team. We, you know, we work regionally with our growers, but we also work as a team at the national level to um, reveal, review the data and, and, you know, choose varieties for trials for the next year and um, just how to, to go about doing the, the the trialing process. The, one of the things when we first started with Novik is we were, um, you know, I'd worked in Africa for a number of years and was familiar with some of the uh, farmer particip participatory research uh, methods and um, things, trial designs like the mother-daughter trial design. And so it seemed like those were very applicable to working on organics in the U.S. because it was a you know, it's a system that we still, I don't think, know a lot about, but um, yeah, these types of methods, you know, integrate farmers into the research process, and I think you do things that are then relevant to what um, what farmers need. Um, the um, I mentioned the mother-daughter trial design. Basically, what this involves is a having a mother site where, like for us, it's the Lewis Brown farm where we have our certified organic ground and we can do our uh, replicated trials there. And then we have individual single rep trials out on various organic farms in the region. And this happens in all of the regions that we work in. Um, we, we've tried to set it up with a set of five crops that are important to organic growers. And, you know, we're primarily focusing on the northern tier of states. So uh, in the first Iteration, broccoli, carrots, snap pea, sweet corn, and winter squash were the, the crops that we used. On the second iteration, we kept sweet corn and switched some of the other crops, tomatoes. And we, we're still working on winter squash, but it's delicata and acorn squash, and then cabbage would be the other crop. In both of these cases, we've, we've kept this um, farmer's regional tri choice trial. Um, and we ask farmers what they would like to see us trial in a particular year, and that may shift over over years. 
Um, and it, it varies by region too. You know, farmers in Wisconsin aren't necessarily going to want the same things that we want to look at, at out here in the Pacific Northwest. Generally, we try to keep the trial to nine varieties or nine entries or maybe a few more. And um, five of those are common to all regions and then four can be regional um, uh, uh, introductions. The, um, we also, it's a, it's a nice thing for plant breeders. I'll get to the breeding part in just a minute, but it's a nice thing for plant breeders in that they can put their experimental materials in the, uh, in these trials as well and get, you know, lots of data over different locations. It's very useful in that way. Uh, there's a website. There's the web page for that. Um, just to give an example of, uh, I'm, I'm going to choose sweet corn. I could have picked squash, but luckily I guess I didn't. Uh, but um, the just a, uh, you know, this is our sweet corn trial from this year. We the key, key traits that we were looking for. We wanted an SE type of uh, sweet corn with early maturity. Uh, cold soil germination, a tender pericarp, good flavor, and, a, and of course good yield and other traits like that. The, um, uh, we did a, well for the, the germination trial we direct seeded, but then for the, um, uh, the actual yield trial we, were, we did transplants. And we had one, in this case, one daughter farm for various, you know, I won't go into why only one farm, but one daughter farm with this trial. Uh, here's a list of some of the varieties, and you may have seen who gets kissed on the, you know, the seed packets on the table at lunch. This is um, one of our success stories, I guess you could say. It's a variety that Adrian Shelton and, and Bill Tracy developed, and uh, an open pollinated bicolor. Um, the population was uh, evaluated in the in the first Novik and, and released right at the end of the process. There are a couple others in here which are OPs, uh, the Tuxana from um, the, uh, uh, Jonathan Spiro and Top Hat also. Uh, My Fair Lady is, a, is, an, is an F1 hybrid um, from Bill's program. And then there's Luscious and Temptation is kind of our standard check in there. It has really good cold germination. Then we had to, you know, sometimes we'll throw in something as an observation. In this case, Candy Mountain a really early uh, variety. Here's an example of, of the yield data. This is just from the Lewis Brown farm. Candy Mountain is very low yielding, but that tends to go with, with the, um, uh, the earliness there. Um, what, what is most interesting here, I think, is that here we have temptation, our check, and then our, um, our OPs are very much in the same range with the checks, at least in this particular trial right here. Now there is a luscious, a very, very nice F1 hybrid, which is, um, it looks like it has higher yield. Um, an example of some of the, we're using radar graphs to look at uh, appearance and taste. And you can see that it's very easy on a radar graph to pick out those that look really good. Who gets kissed is, looks, uh, looks pretty nice. Um, Candy Mountain kind of fell down on some of the, uh, the quality characteristics. And then just a shot of some of the, uh, the years here. Um, switching back a little bit, you know, these are some of the outputs from the, uh, the, the original round with Novik, um, in addition to sweet corn, uh, broccoli variety. Um, there's various germplasm from the project and they haven't been releases made yet. You know, it's the nature of breeding in, in that it's so long a program. Um, and one of the unexpected things has been a couple of books that, yeah, I guess you could say have come out of this. Um, the Organic Crop Breeding, which I co-edited with uh, Edith Lamerts from Buren, and then uh, John Navazio brought his Organic Seed Grower book to fruition during this process. We've trained graduate students. We've seen changes, and, you know, farmers have told us that Novik has made a change in their um, use of varieties, and practically every farmer has told us that. Um, and, and I think we've reached a lot of farmers with our plant breeding um, uh, foundation, our plant breeding workshops and that sort of thing. Just a picture of some of the, the material where we're working with, Jonathan Spiro with the, his broccoli, um, 
and then, well, some of the other materials. Another thing that was kind of interesting that has come out of this has been the development of the Culinary Breeding Network, which is um, Lane Selman's um, idea. Um, and But this came out of a, a actually one of our regional trials where we were looking at peppers and um, we found and we began involving chefs and this seems to be a very fruitful area to start involving chefs in the process. Um, these are some of the breeding goals for the, the current Novik. I'm not going to go into to depth in them, but things like late blight resistant tomatoes and um, I'll, well, I'll just leave it at that. There's um, another project that Michael Mazurik is heading up with a, the fish pepper, selecting a fish type of kind of an ornamental pepper and involving farmers in the selection process, such as you hear, see here, uh, to uh, uh, come up with a kind of a crowdsourced pepper, if you will. And uh, yeah, here's some of the variation in the fruit. So that's about Novik. I'll just very quickly here mention the Tomi project, which is the tomato organic management and improvement project, which is looking primarily at foliar diseases in organic tomatoes. It's headed by Lori Hoagland at Purdue University. And there are a number of partners around the country. This map here shows you where some of the locations of the work are going on. I'm primarily, primarily involved in this objective one, which is selecting improved varieties and it involves um, breeding populations and evaluation in different regions. And then we do a, a recombination phase in the greenhouse uh, with this material. And then the idea will be to send the seed back out. There are a couple of other objectives. One of these is uh, looking at induced systemic resistance and can that be harnessed as a way to uh, manage these diseases. And then there's a third objective, which is identifying safe and effective organic fungicides and biopesticides. The third project that I'll just mention very briefly, and it's just getting started, is something that was funded by the USDA NIFA Plant Breeding Foundational Pro, uh, Program. And it's more of a, a fundamental project where we're looking at assessing uh, genotype by environment interaction, um, basically selecting green beans and carrots in parallel in different uh, environments, well, in conventional and organic environments, and then looking to see what happens genetically and phenotypically in these different populations, and maybe trying to get an idea of what is important in organic in terms of the genetics. So I'm, I'll just leave this with I, what I think is a, a rosy picture. This is the State of Organic Seed Report in uh, 2009. Um, the funding that was coming from various sources, some of them federal, some of them non-federal. Um, in 20, the, the new, there's, there will be a new report coming out this year. And the, uh, you can see that the funding has been continuing to increase at a, at a very good rate. And hopefully we will see a continuation uh, with, with more funding available for organic plant breeding. So thank you.